Hello guys and welcome to another profile tree video. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at what is PHP used for in web development. So without further ado we're going to go ahead and get started. So before we get into the list of the different types of features for PHP, let's dive into what exactly PHP is all about. So PHP, which is actually Hypertext Preprocessor, is a server-side scripting language widely used in web development. Now it is designed specifically for creating dynamic and interactive web pages and web applications. Now, PHP is embedded directly into HTML code, and that allows developers to mix server-side logic with client-side elements seamlessly. Now that we've stated that, we'll go ahead and jump into our first key uses of PHP in web development. And that's server-side scripting. Now, PHP is primarily used for server-side scripting. And that means it runs on the web server to process and generate dynamic content before sending it to the client's web browser. Uh, just to further explain what I mean by this, it's easier to understand with the diagram. So we'll go ahead and take a look on the very top here and we'll just move a little bit closer in. So this is pretty much uh, server side scripting. Now it's all diagrammed out. You can see that we have our web server machine. And this is our web server. Of course, we've got our HTML. Then it creates a request to the scripting engine. Goes to the back end for the servers. That's all your database, mail, anything uh, related to that. So if a user sends out mail, goes directly to the back end, goes into the scripting engine, uh, HTML, which is your web server. And then of course your scripting engine has your file system. So page, PHP, all your, your different PHP pages. And of course, that's where the server side script is. Then from the web server passes through, you've got your HTML document, so that's your front end pretty much goes to the uh, internet and that'll display it to the user's machine. So think of it as web server machine, that's your computer. You've got your little screen in front of you, which is the internet. And of course, uh, you've got the user itself looking at the actual website. So that's just uh, server side scripting in a nutshell. And of course, with this process, this allows developers to create web pages with content that changes based on user input, database queries, or other backend operations. So next up is the dynamic content. So with PHP, developers can generate dynamic content on web pages, and this would be like displaying personalized greetings. So you can even do like a pop-up with a name. So hello, look, uh, would you like uh, so-and-so? So maybe introducing them to a brand new product, things like that. Uh, you can have user specific data as well. You can have real time information or dynamically generating HTML elements based on database content. So there's multiple ways of actually producing that dynamic content. Now, however, in order to actually have and generate that dynamic content, you will need the database to support it. So of course you will have to grab that user ID. You will have to get that um, background information in order to actually access and create those custom uh, personalized greetings. And that would be the only way to do it. But we'll talk about that later on in the video. So our next one is the form processing. So PHP is often used to process data submitted through HTML forms. So I'll actually show a diagram to further explain this, but it can validate user inputs, sanitize data, and perform actions based on form submissions, such as saving data to a database or sending emails. So as I've said, I will further explain this in a diagram. So I'll go ahead and pop open the diagram here. And we'll get a further look into it. So this is basically the way 
it would gather information uh, in terms of form processing. So here we have the actual web browser. So that'll be your website. So you can use your own website as an example. So just think about it. You've got your contact form. And if we take a look into this here, uh, we'll go on to the contact us. We type our name, we type our last name, email address, preferred contact number, and uh, basically what we want to inquire about. That all happens within the web browser. Then, of course, it'll request the page to PHP. Uh, PHP then gathers that specific page for the content. And then that'll link back to your database. That's why it's always important to have a database for your website. Of course, that's where it's going to bank and store all your details. And it's not, not just with uh, form processing as well. It could be with your actual stock and items if you're running an e-commerce site. So say someone bought something from your web browser, that'll request a page. So that'll pick out the specific uh, PHP page and that'll be like, you know, shopping cart or the actual item. Link back to the database, It'll let the database know that there's one less item here. Send that content back to PHP then send that HTML output to the web browser. So that's how that works. So in our term with form processing, we have the requested page to PHP, uh, the request content to the database. Uh, database has not acknowledged that there has been some information that's been banked into the database itself. So that stores it. That'll send the content to PHP. Then that'll send the HTML output to the web browser. So I'll actually do an explanation on that now. So back onto our website. So this is the contact form. Uh, basically you enter your name, last name, which of course is required. Then your email address, which is also required. So that's what's gonna be banked into the database. Now preferred contact number, you can't enter your contact number if you want to. Uh, so say it'll be like that, support, at profiletree.com and then your preferred contact number, your name, last name, and then tell us about your project. So just say test, well, we'll, we'll just say test, but of course, put and input your inquiry. Uh, then of course, you are happy to receive profile tree news. You don't have to do that. Uh, agree with terms and condition. And then of course, if there's a recapture, go ahead and click, I'm not a robot. Now the confirmation that you will get, like I explained earlier on, is that from the actual PHP, so as soon as I request that page and send that uh, request that content, I'll get sent that content back and it'll give me a HTML output, which will then, if I hit submit, give me a message saying, thanks for contacting us. We will get in touch with you shortly. So it'll give us and provide us a different message once I've accomplished that task. So that part is the request page or the send HTML output to web browser. So that's pretty much how that works. So our next key uses in PHP web development is the database connectivity. So what exactly is that? PHP basically has an excellent support for connecting to various databases. Now, you guys may know MySQL, so that would be one as well. And then you also have one that's PostgreSQL, SQLite, and basically there's other databases you can connect to. Now, that of course allows developers to interact with databases to store and retrieve data for web applications. And just to further explain what database connectivity is, here's a simple diagram. So we'll go ahead and get a closer look into it. So here we have our application or web application. And then of course you have your server, uh, which will be PHP. And of course that's what you're gonna be using to code on. Then you will have your database. So whatever is sent from the application to the server. Again, this is more or less the uh, process for form processing. Uh, it'll go to the server and then from the server, it'll be then stored into the actual database. And then whatever 
you need to retrieve from the database, you can bring forward to the server, or if not, um, it'll pass through a message all the way to the application, or as well as the application, the web development. And as I said, the developers are able to interact with databases and it enables them to store and retrieve data for web applications or you know just a, an app application. So our next one is user authentication and actually authorization as well. So what PHP can do is it can handle user authentication and authorization by ensuring that only authorized users can access specific parts of a website or perform certain actions. Now again, just to explain what user authentication is all about, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys an example. So we've got an example here. So uh, don't mind about the other uh, PHP pages. All we need to focus on is the actual uh, register, login, and the logout for the database. So index is basically your main, that's your main page. Uh, if you register with a user or you're a brand new user, you're gonna register. Then of course that goes into the process if into the database, then you log in, then you go to the session or the actual page area, and then you have that option to log out. So that's pretty much how it works in theory. So uh, not in theory, that, that would be how it would actually work. So uh, you would register, that'll store into the database. That, will, that database will remember your user login details. That'll be your actual username, and that'll be your password. If you type those incorrectly, that'll then bring you to the um, the actual session or the website. And if you choose to log out, you can go ahead and do so. So it's just basically a bunch of arrows to lead to each direction. So what other features exactly does PHP have or what key uses anyway? Um, now there are other parts like session management so php enables management of user sessions and that allows developers to maintain user specific data across multiple pages or visits to the website on top of that cms is actually well the behind the scenes of cms is built on php so that's the platforms like wordpress ones that you may use uh, joomla drupal wix shopify those sorts of content management systems are built using PHP. Now, these CMS systems would be used to create, manage, and update content onto their websites easily. And as well as that, you can build a website from scratch as well. That's what's great about that. And it was actually backcoded and built using PHP. You also have web services and APIs. So PHP can be used to create web services and APIs that allow communication and data exchange between different applications or services. And of course you've got server-side rendering. So PHP can generate HTML content dynamically and that enables server-side rendering for web applications where in this case you would use it for SEO and SEO is to increase ranking traffic onto your website. So that would, that would be the part where it would take into consideration. But overall that is what PHP and development is all about. It's flexible it has extensive community support and it's compatible with various web servers and operating systems which makes it a perfect language to use in web development so folks hopefully you enjoyed today's video if you did please do leave us a comment in the comment section below let us know how we got on but other than that i'll see you guys for the next video thank you thank you very much for watching